Hello, everyone. So, um, so my name is uh, Anastasia. Anastasia, or well, children. My little students call me Miss Anna. Yeah, that's they don't know my Russian name. They don't know I'm Russian actually. And um, so I'm an English teacher, and I'm currently running uh, the project uh, which we call English as a Native Language. And um, uh, we started the project um, more than three years ago now in September 2015, and we started it with uh, Ray. We actually. We had been thinking of studying for three years before, uh, and uh, we looked at uh, Ray's family experience, and we decided to uh, create um, like monolingual English-only environment uh, for children. And well, we actually started um, a group. Uh, we started working with a group of children, uh, similarly the way Ray uh, worked with his own children. Um, and uh, so in this project, uh, children acquire the language similarly the way or probably the same way uh, they did or do uh, acquire their uh, native and in our case dominant language, which is Russian. Um, and uh, so they learn the language um, like experientially, they kind of absorb it uh, within the social settings we create for them within the project. And um, so we have achieved, I think, some good results. Well, um, I will tell you about these children. Well, um, so the first boy uh, in the photo is George, and um, uh, he has been with us uh, from the very first day of the project and uh, from the very beginning. And uh, when he joined us, he was uh, almost five years old. And in one year and a half, um, we decided uh, to take uh, some kind of exam, some kind of test. So uh, it was A1 spoken com com um, European framework. And uh, uh, George uh, managed to pass this test with distinction. Well, it's, well, it's not the... A, well, it's not the target, like, to take an exam, but um, uh, parents of these children, they do, do not speak English for their children. And um, uh, Vova and Nastya, these two kids, they joined the project one year la um, a year later, and uh, they were also, they turned five when they joined us. And also in one year and a half, almost in one year and a half, uh, well, they basically did the same uh, what... George did, and uh, oh well, we're really proud of these kids. We're really proud of all our kids, and uh, well, it's really rewarding to watch them uh, grow, uh, to watch them de uh, develop, especially in terms of um, the language acquisition. Um, so, um, okay, um, when. Um, Preparing my presentation, I started thinking of some principles or conditions because uh, now, um, well, um, having worked uh, in this project for three years, well, we can um, work out some principles or conditions, well, that we think are important. Uh, and uh, we're sure that actually anyone, all the children can acquire the language under some uh, uh, conditions um, and uh, there they are well um, the first one is encouraging environment uh, then uh, well the second one is actually uh, a poll I borrowed a poll changed it I've changed it a little bit and uh, one parent one language but for us it's one community one language or one caregiver one language and um, uh, the next very important condition is sufficient input so, um, as for encouraging environment, well, um, uh, when we started the project, we knew that we had to kind of um, encourage children to speak English, and it was quite challenging because, well, imagine a three-year-old or a four-year-old um, exposed to a new place um, full of strangers, teachers who are strangers to them, and on top of that all, they speak strange language they do not know because uh, teachers now project, they speak English only with children. 
Uh, so uh, we had to, uh, uh, well, to reduce the str we had to reduce the stress, the amount of stress that children go through. And uh, it was really important to create emotionally and physically safe environment. And uh, what we mean here is, um, uh, first of all, we are friends and I would, I would say we are actually family and uh, what teachers do, uh, they, um, they, uh, well, do, they are truly loving and caring people. Uh, they model patience. They model kindness. Um, uh, we work at um, well, making um, everything we do in the project um, uh, appealing and interesting to kids. So to to make them like involved mm -hmm, in the process, and uh, positive emotions uh, they contribute greatly uh, into language acquisition. Mm -hmm. So they feel positive. So. And um, very well, I'll show you later some results we have achieved because we film ki children a lot. So we have lots of videos and well, I have some bits and pieces to share with you later. Well, um, okay, we do many, many, many uh, different things uh, with children. What is important here is to provide them with some routine uh, uh, because, uh, well, they need some kind of plan of the day so to follow. They know that when they come to a project, I don't like, some people call it kindergarten, but it's not. Uh, so uh, they know what we have in the morning, uh, when we have like brunch, uh, th then we have lessons and they are used to it and they come up to us asking like, what are we going to do today? So they're really interested because every day there is something new. Uh, so uh, we do different projects, so here is in the photo, well, it's a model of lungs, human lungs, so when we uh, studied human body, uh, we looked some, we took some shoe covers and uh, made this model, yes, and uh, looked at how it actually, uh, how the, uh, this organ actually works. So we looked at the planets, at solar system, uh, we conduct different uh, scientific experiments, uh, arts and crafts projects like owls, children made them themselves, so we work at fine motor skills, gross motor skills, because, well, that's how children develop. Uh, there is a project that um, I talked about previously, uh, seed germination project, so uh, it took like the whole month, so we looked at how seeds grow and uh, it was really interesting and it boosts language development as well. Um, so uh, the next principle we use is like one community, one language. Well, there, uh, previously there were some uh, different ideas that, well, uh, to be honest, I haven't thought of, but I will. Uh, so one community, one language. Uh, so children in our project do not know that uh, we are not uh, native speakers and um, uh, we benefit greatly from uh, being non-native speaking teachers because um, because uh, in the beginning, uh, so we have like, these are stages of language acquisition of a baby project. So in the beginning, which is like from one to six months, we do understand children. So uh, to reduce that amount of stress, we do understand them. Uh, it depends on the age though. So if it's a four-year-old, a six-year-old, it's different. Uh, uh, but um, in the beginning, we don't understand. And then like in six months or even earlier, we stop doing this. Uh, and uh, we kind of, well, provoke and encourage children to speak English, to start speaking, to start answering in English, to, um, to start asking questions in English. Uh, so the next stage uh, is when we stop like from uh, 6 to 12 months and um, uh, uh, well it's the time when they well actually start speaking English and uh, what we also managed to do we we actually made children speak English not with their caregivers not with the teachers but now uh, well, they speak English with each other as well when they are in the project. Mm -hmm. It was a miracle, I should say. We, tr we, we tried some things and they actually worked. We didn't expect them to work. We didn't expect them to speak English uh, in the project, but now they do. 
Um, so uh, the most challenge, uh, challenging thing is sufficient input. And uh, what I, um, well, basing on our experience, I should say that the greater the number of hours, the greater your success is. And um, uh, Barbara Pearson in her book, Raising a Bilingual Kid, and uh, Olga also mentioned this. Uh, she mentions like 30% of waking hours uh, per day, which is like 25 hours of exposure per week. Uh, and that's what we actually do. We, uh, so children spend uh, four hours uh, a day, five days a week in our project. Mm -hmm. So uh, we try to make most of this time. Uh, and um, there is a, a kind of, I don't know, a rule probably uh, that actually Ray wrote, and we have it on our wall. Uh, and like it reminds us every day what we should do. So keep narrating everything you or the kids do. Use exaggerated gestures and facial expression to counter the meaning. Look them in the eye, which is really important. <laughs> when you see a, cat, a kid gets the meaning, pick it from there and repeat it a lot of times. Do it playfully and be funny. That's what children enjoy. Um, uh, and um, that's what we actually do. Uh, we keep like repeating things and uh, that's... Uh, so we understand Russian, and that helps us a lot to work with what children want, really. So we, we do understand what they want, so we can play with it a little bit. We can provoke them, yes, to like, uh, uh, but, okay. So uh, what we use to boost language development. So we use drama. Uh, we read uh, books in English with children. Uh, so here we can say, uh, we can see, like the mitten story, one of my favorites, Room on the Broom, uh, Christmas Carol, so you can see Ebenezer Scrooge uh, here. Uh, so it, uh, children also benefit greatly uh, from these stories. They learn uh, lots of new words, expressions, and chunks they use later in their speech, and they will they remember <laughs> they remember these stories forever. I should say it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of rehearsals. Uh, and I just want to probably share one piece. I don't know if it's. Yes. Um, so, uh, so of course, parents also enjoy uh, yeah, being a part of that and watching uh, their children. So, uh, it, well, this one was really great. Not a fiasco. Yes, Joe. <laughs> okay. So uh, we read a lot, uh, though children nowadays are not used to reading much, uh, to be honest. And when I say story time, they usually like, no, we don't want that. We want to play. But um, as soon as you start uh, reading to them, as soon as you start telling a story, they are all around you, like uh, looking at you, waiting for what is going to happen next. And uh, we also do like different projects connected to the stories we read. So I also use a story sack. So we made a story sack where like I put a book and all the characters that are involved in the book inside, and it's always like a, a surprise for them. So what I'm what I'm gonna to take out of this story sack. Mm -hmm. So here is a story about the caterpillar. So there was a bird, caterpillar, butterflies, and so on. Um, Julia Donaldson's books are fantastic, I think, uh, those who. Uh, thanks, uh, by the way, thanks to Andrew Walkley, who recommended me Room on the Broom. He inspired me. <laughs> yeah. Um, we. Okay, we also run long-term projects. Uh, well, uh, this autumn we did butterfly life cycle. Uh, so we did a lot of stuff uh, working at fine motor skills. Um, well, looked at the butterfly life cycle, read the very hungry caterpillar, learned, used socks, made our own caterpillars, and watched the fantastic cartoon, which is Oscar-nominated, Sweet Cocoon, although the end of the story is quite disappointing. I, and um, well, uh, we, we did lots of activities. So it took us like maybe two weeks. So now they know everything about the life cycle of a butterfly. 
Uh, also, uh, around short-term projects, like for example, cooking projects, they really enjoy it. And uh, like we made waffles uh, and smoothies. So these are our little chefs. So they feel really positive and emotional about cooking, actually. Um, we also use a dramatic play. Here are the photos, so I really like this story. Uh, like playing a doctor and a patient, and here is uh, in the middle, uh, it's Vova, well, who actually uh, is a patient. And the teacher uh, there, Anne, she's a doctor. So uh, here is a conversation. Doctor, what seems to be a problem, Vova? I've fallen in love. <laughs> doctor, how do you feel, Vova? It hurts everywhere. So how do they know? I don't know. I don't know how do they know. Yeah, but that's, well, that's what he said. Well, amazing. Uh, um, okay, I probably wouldn't show this because we don't have much time. So we also watch, listen, command, talk a lot, and provoke children, uh, and encourage them, of course, to speak English uh, uh, in the project. And, um, we have a wonderful team, Nova School of English, Nova Baby Nursery School, and we have wonderful people working with us. We're a team. And, well, I'd like you to show some bits and pieces. <laughs> so what our children are capable of doing, well, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Uh -huh. okay. No, I think only one more time. One more time? Or do one? No. No. How many? Two. Uh, How <laughs> many times? Peter, uh, how can you get to the mustache? Oh, wait, 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 it's a The boss is the fun for the mustache. I told him, okay. Why? Because I don't want to cry. Because I made this food. I made this food. And then you can cook a mustache.
<laughs> thank you. So, thank you very much. So, if you have any questions, so I'm ready to answer. Yes, yeah, you. Thanks a lot. We've got the question from you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, before we take a child to our project, we talk about this uh, with parents. So, yeah, they uh, actually, we have these forms, they sign the forms that actually allow us to use the videos. Yeah, yeah, we use videos and photos, uh, yeah, and well, they are fine with it. Well, well uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do your children speak Russian between themselves, and mm -hmm. how do you react to? How do you? What's how your reaction to this? Uh, uh, the children who j uh, who have just joined, because well, this year we have uh, many more children, so uh, of course they use uh, Russian, of course. But those who have been with us for two or three years, they speak English with each other, so we manage that. And well, now it's natural. It took us a week to do this, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> How did you do it? Oh uh, well, we actually didn't expect this to work, but it was like, okay, if you speak Russian, you'll get a worksheet, a worksheet like maths or some writing task. Well, actually, it worked. It well, it took us maybe three days, maybe a week, but then they switched completely to English. And it's a group of how many children? Uh, now there are nine children in the morning. Mm -hmm. I mean, the group which manages to communicate in English between themselves, how long have they studied before they could? Uh -huh. them how, how long they have spent with you? Uh, three, two years. Right. In that so they've been in the project for three, two years. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. So when you just first enroll children, you don't expect them to communicate? Between no, 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 them, no, right. no, no. And we actually didn't know that. Right. Uh -huh. So we found out it experientially. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, what is the youngest age of your children? Uh, the youngest ones were three years old, but uh, to be honest, I would prefer four-year-old four kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how do you organize the groups? I mean, uh, are they are children of different age, so three, four, five, yeah. uh, if they don't speak English? Yeah, they are all in one group, different ages, and well, they are they feel fine. They help each other, so all the kids will help the younger ones. And those who can sp well, those who speak English now, they help us with like they interpret stuff for us. So how they help the younger ones. Mm -hmm. So if they speak, uh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> if they speak uh, Russian, for example, you react just in English. Well, with four-year-olds, yes. So if they, um, there is a child who joined um, when she well she's six and she has just joined, it's very different. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, she, well, she she might understand. We understand Russian. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Uh, do you write your own curriculum, or do you use? Yes. You, you, you write it from scratch. Yes. Is it based on on something, or um, like, a, like a key stages? Um, YouTube, Pinterest. IP? Yes, <laughs> that's what we use. Uh -huh. Well, actually, uh, children like anything we do in the project. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, is it after school program, sorry, or is it just like a kindergarten? Uh, it's a preschool program, but now, uh, well, some of the children uh, have grown up and they went to school. And um, now we have also after school program. So mm -hmm. how many how many times a week? Uh, so uh, the morning group, uh, well, they have classes well four hours a day, five days a week. So the second group uh, now only three times a week, and uh, I'm very sorry about it. Yeah, we can keep the language, but it's really hard to progress. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Um, when kids join the project, uh, I believe parents have some expectations. So where do you put the bar uh, in, in a year? Um, 
Well, uh, when we started the project, uh, parents, I, I can't say parents had any expectations, to be honest. They just trusted us. Um, but, well, yes, uh, we watch kids and we can say that, like, um, in about six months time, uh, they start well, understanding everything we say. And uh, within like nine months, uh, from nine to 12, they sa start answering in English. They start sp speaking English. But it also depends on the teachers how much we like force them. <laughs> okay, one more question and then you. Okay. I want to uh, thank you for this project. I thank think you. It's amazing. But be honest, <laughs> do you have time for yourself? Well, I. <laughs> <laughs> Well, of course, it takes a lot of time, and the project takes a lot of time. But I really admire uh, Angela Moms because uh, we spend only five, uh, we spend only four hours a day with these children, and uh, Angela Moms spend much more time with their children. So, um, yeah, we, yeah, we need to find some. Well, we have a good team, so we. Uh, work together. Yeah, it takes a lot of time though. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, I do have I hope I do have some time for myself <laughs> um, Sorry, just a quick question um, Is this right that uh, when a child sort of finishes your preschool um, System and they start school they then can still continue with you? Yeah, because there is no other way. We have Saratov is not a big s well. It's it's a big city, but there are no schools uh, for children like that. Exactly. So, so can you just t say a couple of words about this sort of program? How many times a week? I think you answered. Yeah, yeah, three times a week, uh, three hours a day. For three hours a day. Yeah. Now it's only right. nine hours a week. Yeah. Yeah. And ho what happens? Uh, like, do you think you manage to like develop further on with this um, language level? Or? Uh, We'll see, because we started it this year, but yeah, it's really challenging. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. And the final question for you. Thank you. I was really interested in the video, the way that you were kind of intuitively reformulating what the students were saying, yeah? So as the, as the students were kind of uttering little words here and there, there's a lot of kind of echoing back, but with upgrading of their language, yeah? Yes. And I wondered to what degree that was a kind of conscious policy within the school, or to what degree you talk about that, or if you're aware of that's what you're doing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's uh -huh. We do it deliberately. We do it on purpose. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yes. So there is a Thank lot of professional thinking behind this teaching and behind these four times, four hours a day with the yes. uh, students. Yes. yes, it's not just we come around and okay, no, well, what just shall we do? No, no. Hang around, no, 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 no. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you.